speed even though dog. Alright guys. Well, it is another gray yuck rainy depressing and all the rest of them kind of day here in the collapse of everything where we have stumbled one day deeper into the fall of 2024 i think we're at wednesday september 25th 2024 and and, and guys i have been saying for years i am on the fence about peak oil okay i am on the fence about it uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna read the beginnings of two articles on medium.com today then we're gonna go over to the mainstream media and, and and read an article from there and uh i guess it's two against one uh, medium.com so y y you know guys I'm a good little doomer I I I'm a good little collapsitarian chronicling the collapse of everything <clears throat> and since I went down this rabbit hole in 2008 I have been reading this in the in, in my doom scrolling every day for 16 years you can take this doom scrolling about peak oil and Andy the gardener's comments about peak oil and everything else and, and just keep pushing the number later and later into into history and it sounds pretty much like it did the, the day I, I first pulled my head out of my ass uh, back in 2008 and became a doomer. So I've been reading this for 16 years now. Okay, and, and, and then I get in my gas sucking truck and I head out in, in, into general society. You, you know, I drive to New York, I, I drive back and forth. You know, I drive from New York to Florida, Florida to New York, spend a lot of times on America's interstate highway system, going through a bunch of cities along the way. I see absolute zero sign of peak oil anywhere okay if, if I had not if I was not a doomer I, I and I and I wasn't doom scrolling this stuff every day for 16 years uh, it never would have occurred to me uh, th 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 this topic called peak oil I see no sign of anything but an ever expanding demand for oil. Maybe my problem is is conflating the definition of the word demand for desire. All right. Uh, I, I see absolutely no indication without some major collapse between now and let's call it 2050. They people like to use that. Uh, Unless there is some major correction uh, in this completely unsustainable global industrial civil civilization between now and 2050, if, in the words of Tim Garrett, if something does not give and uh, based on present trends, uh, I, I see no reason to believe that demand for oil is going to go anywhere but up, up, up. Uh, carbon emissions are going to go up, up, up. Uh, all of this stuff uh, about the, 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 the you know, EROEI and, and how much money uh, oil companies have to spend uh, to get a dollar's worth of oil out of the ground. I, I don't give a damn. If, if these oil companies need to spend 99 cents, you, you know, after all of these subsidies, if they need to spend 99 cents to make one dollar, they're going to do it. All right? It's that simple. 
I see uh, no evidence other than reading all of this Doomer stuff. So anyway, uh, Andy the Gardener, please set me straight why I have this wrong. But, but of course, uh, you, 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 you know, I am a chronicler of the collapse. So something is going to, something has to give between now and 2050. If nuclear war doesn't get us first, you know, the, the last horseman of the apocalypse, climate change, will, 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 will come and do it. Uh, but I think we are, I, I have always said, and I will stick with this, we are going to hit the, the, the climate tipping point due to carbon emissions uh, before we hit peak oil. But anyway, that's just me. That, that, that is my conclusion uh, after 16 years of reading this. So we're going to start with one of my favorite chroniclers of the collapse, the mythical, the enigmatic B, B on medium.com. I'm a little bit uh, embarrassed, uh, B, saying... 2030, 2030 is when our runaway train falls off the Seneca cliff. I honestly don't know if uh, B was being somewhat ironic by doubling up the cliches. And so B is claiming 2030 is the date he's now throwing out. Uh, so let's read... Okay, what follows is not a prediction, rather an explanation of how things could and eventually will turn extremely difficult all of a sudden. And he is pulling the year 2030 out of somewhere. And so this is uh, the top two reasons why the runaway train is going to go over the cliff in 2030. And uh, I, despite uh, my buddy Elliot Jacobson claiming anybody who uses the word exponentially as many times as B does, is, uh, well, it's a five-letter word beginning with I, ending with a T. Uh, time will tell if Elliot is correct on his reading of B. But uh, let, let's, uh, the, the top two reasons why B uh, claims we're over the Seneca cliff in six years. <clears throat> The exponentially, the exponentially rising energy cost of extracting oil, the master resource. <coughs> I honestly don't know if it meets the definition of exponential or not. Uh, as, how many times have we heard this? Repeat after me, class. As rich deposits large continental fields deplete and get increasingly replaced with costlier to tap ones. More and more energy is burned during production. While in 1970, only 3% of the energy obtained from oil had to be reinvested into more extraction, now it's a proportion equivalent to 15.5% of the gross energy produced from oil liquids, while in 2050, this number will be 50%. So he's saying in 2050, it'll be the EROEI will hit 50%, yet he's claiming the train's going over the cliff in 2030. Huh. This sharp rise in energy cost will soon translate into a veritable net energy cliff, the prime reason behind the Seneca effect. 
described above. In practice, this means that while we still can use 85 million barrels of oil equivalent of the little more than 100 million produced worldwide today, net energy from oil will drop precipitously to 27 and a half million barrels of oil equivalent, taking the 55 million barrels projected production figure in 2050 as a basis. I don't know if you're still with B. I know I'm not. All right, put more simply, put more simply, during the course of a mere two decades, okay, starting in 2030. Okay, so the train will go over the edge. I thought a Seneca cliff, if it went over the cliff in 2030, it would be at the bottom of the cliff in 2031. No, this is a 20-year Seneca cliff. Put more simply, during the course of a mere two decades, starting in 2030, we would lose two-thirds of energy from liquid fuels compared to what we can use today, equivalent to a 5 to 6 percent decrease in net energy annually. Uh, la, 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 la. Keep in mind, 90 percent of all transportation, agriculture, and mining fuel still comes from oil. And number two, how many times have we heard this? Lack of discoveries and accelerating depletion of older oil fields. The rate of finding new oil has been far below the actual consumption rate for decades now adding around 11 billion barrels per year on average versus the 30 billion consumed every year. In 2022 and 2023, notably, oil companies have discovered 5 billion barrels only, replacing a mere one-sixth of what has been consumed that year. The reason is simple. All the big oil fields have been found a long time ago already, and what remains adds very little to the overall picture besides taking a lot of energy to find. The problem is that while older, larger fields deplete slowly at first, their depletion rate accelerates with time. This acceleration phase, unfortunately, now coincides with the rapid depletion of newer, smaller, unconventional fields such as shale oil, resulting in higher and higher global depletion rates with every passing year. Thus, the later we push peak production by investing into extending oil production from existing fields, the steeper the fall will become. And I don't know, B sounds like he knows a lot more what he's talking about than I do. So, like most good little doomers, I will just trust what he says. So then we're going to go listen from now, Sarah Miller, who calls herself an energy journalist, that's all I know about Sarah, is that she has been an energy journalist for years. Her uh, long essay today, I'm going to read the opening uh, chapter of it, is titled, Oil Beyond the Peak. Peak oil demand is close. What should we expect beyond this point? Slow to no global growth for GDP and a sharp slide for oil. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so how are you reading the tea leaves, Sarah? Most Western oil companies have finally conceded that oil consumption 
will top out before 2030. Obviously, she must be talking about the non-OPEC countries as we're getting ready to find out. So I don't know what her definition of most Western oil companies have finally conceded that oil consumption will top out before 2030 and maybe much sooner. That now includes even the historically unbending will of Exxon who have finally conceded that demand growth will flatten and peak this decade, albeit they are still mired in fantasy when it comes to the world beyond the peak, imagining steady economic growth and a high plateau in demand for fossil fuels out as far as 2050. So what Exxon is saying, yeah, it will peak but it's not going to come back down. It's just going to stay at this uh, unsustainable plateau till 2050. <clears throat> Sarah's not buying it. In fact, the multiple crises visibly engulfing the globe in energy, economics, geopolitics, and most importantly, the climate and environment ensure that the world of 2050 will be nothing like the world of 2024. That much is guaranteed, which is what, uh, you know, Tim Garrett, uh, another way of saying what he said, something is going to give between now and 2050. It has to. And so, I do agree that something is going to give, and after it gives, on the other side of that bottleneck at the bottom of that Seneca cliff, yeah, the demand for oil uh, is going to drop, but it's not going to be because the desire for oil has gone anywhere. Uh, we're, we're splitting hairs now. While not perhaps guaranteed, it is highly likely that the decades ahead will see little, if any, growth in that peculiar outmoded metric known as GDP, in that this absence of economic growth will be reflected in shrinking, not steadily growing, energy usage. Energy shrinkage will, in turn, make the transition to renewable electricity and electric transit faster and easier. By 2050, fossil fuel use can largely be the thing of the past that current climate goals assume it will be. The decisive step is the first one, reducing, or better still, halting all economic growth ain't gonna happen. The cancer that drives everything. For now, governments show no sign of adopting any such approach, but with luck, they won't have to slow to no growth will just happen. High on the list of the myriad factors driving the world towards slow to no growth are the climate itself, broader environmental degradation, widespread population decline. I don't know what a planet this woman is on. Trade wars and popular, popular disaffection with the consumption-obsessed way the human world has operated over the last half century. Ain't gonna happen. I do not know what planet uh, this uh, Lulu is living on. Whether 
these factors will unfold quickly enough to keep the planet for humans and most of the planet and animal species alive today is much less clear. Still less evident is whether the process will be equitable enough that money won't be the sole determinant of who lives beyond the upheaval and who dies in the process. Whether that process will be the climate justice driven concept adherents call degrowth. Well, that's a whole nother rant, but uh, the one thing where Sarah and B and Andy the gardener and James Howard Kunstler and all the rest agree is that there's no way in hell that, uh, that, that oil demand uh, is going to be anywhere in 2050 like it is in 2040. Ain't gonna happen. And uh, I, I, I do agree with that conclusion, but not if, if the definition for demand for oil uh, is uh, the same as desire for oil that if we don't go over one of these Seneca cliffs or hit one of these proverbial uh, walls and limits to growth, uh, which we are going to hit at some point, uh, you better believe I see zero evidence that the demand for oil is going anywhere except uh, through the stratosphere. The, the, the only question that I see is, is are we going to be able to supply the demand? It's all this talk, this talk, it's always about demand and nobody's talking about supply. So how is the mainstream media uh, playing this? This is from the French news service. No peak oil demand on the horizon phase out a fantasy, says OPEC. OPEC said Tuesday, meaning yesterday, that phasing out oil was a fantasy. I agree 100%. Phasing out oil was a fantasy as the Saudi-led cartel forecast that demand would keep growing until at least 2050, a key year in the battle against climate change. The oil cartel's prediction runs counter to the assessment of the Paris-based International Energy Agency, which sees demand for fossil fuels peaking this decade as the world turns to renewable energy and electric cars. I am siding with OPEC on this. Uh, unless something happens, uh, and unless we get nuclear war uh, up and running, which looks like we're doing a pretty good job of doing, no fucking way, no fucking way uh, will we see demand for fossil fuels peaking this decade as the world turns to renewable energy and electric cars ain't gonna happen. The IEA is full of shit and uh, I am 100% with OPEC, you know, banning nuclear war. In the group's, OPEC's not IEA obviously, in the group's annual World Oil Outlook OPEC Secretary General Haithan al Geis said oil and gas make up well over half of the energy mix today, quote, and are expected to do the same in 2050. Uh, continuing quoting this man, what the outlook underscores is that the fantasy of phasing out oil and gas bears no relation to fact. Ain't gonna happen. 
a realistic view of demand growth expectations necessitates adequate investments in oil and gas today, tomorrow, and for many decades into the future, he added. And obviously, guys, uh, I, I hear what people are saying. Sam, uh, the, the, guy, the guy's entire life depends on people investing in, in, in oil. Uh, it is on oil investors. Of course, this is what uh, the leader of OPEC is going to be saying. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, it's why uh, Elon Musk wants everybody on the planet to have 10 kids so he can sell 10 Teslas to every family on the planet. Anyway, uh, I guess this is, I don't know if this is from OPEC or from uh, the French uh, media, demand for oil alone, it, oil alone, is expected to reach 12 million barrels per day by 2050, up 17 and a half percent from uh, 120. I'm sorry. What did, did I say 112? Demand for oil alone is expected to reach 120 million barrels per day by 2050, up 17 and a half percent from 102 million barrels per day in 2023, the report said. OPEC also raised its forecast for the year 2045 to 118.9 million barrels per day compared to 116 million per barrels per day it predicted in last year's report, uh, which did not look at 2050. Said Geis, quote, there is no peak oil demand on the horizon. There you go. At the UN COP28 climate summit last year, hosted by OPEC member United Arab Emirates, nations agreed on the goal of, quote, transitioning away from fossil fuels, close quote, in order to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. I'm not going to touch that one and get into that rant. The landmark agreement, there you go, the landmark agreement, that sounds pretty landmark to me, also called for tripling renewable energy capacity globally by 2030, which, uh, ain't going to happen, and even if it does, it makes no difference to the oil forecast. The deal was reached after OPEC urged its members to reject language that quotes targets fossil fuels after an earlier draft had included the words phase out. <clears throat> It said uh, Tuesday's OPEC report, quote, while energy policy ambitions remain high, the outlook expects greater scrutiny and pushback on some overly ambitious policy targets, both from policymakers and populations. It is evidence that energy security continues to be a paramount concern, and I would say the paramount concern. Well, the price of energy uh, is the paramount concern. The report said demand growth was driven by the rising world population, huh, and growing demand from India and other non, you know, not the big 20. Among sectors 
the strongest demand will come from petrochemicals, road transportation, and aviation. The report stressed that, quote, all energy sources need to expand with the exception of coal. While OPEC opposes a phase out of fossil fuels, its report noted demand for renewables, mainly solar and wind power, will increase at the fastest rate, growing fivefold between now and 2050. But, you know, regardless of that, oil is still expected to retain the largest uh, the largest share of the total energy mix at 29.3% in 2050 compared to 30.9% uh, last year. So in, in they're predicting that in the total mix, it's barely going to drop. That's because the entire pie is getting bigger as the demand from India and Sub-Saharan Africa and all the rest uh, gets bigger and bigger. The entire energy demand pie is going to grow. So even if renewables uh, do increase fivefold, it's only going to bring down the uh, oils uh, part by about 1%. You know, this is what you never hear with these uh, limp dick greeny lefties. Uh, natural gas will overtake coal for second place, accounting for 24% of the mix by mid-century. Uh, the share of renewables will grow from 3.2% last year to 14% uh, in 2050. But as I was just saying, it makes no difference. We don't even need to get into all the bright green lies uh, about what that means for the planet. That's a whole nother rant. Uh, the report said gasoline vehicles, quote, are expected to continue to dominate road transportation, close quote. Uh, OPEC's numbers are at odds with the IEA, which advise its member countries, mostly Western democracies on energy policy. IEA Executive Director Faith Byrell told AFP last week that oil demand is slowing. He attributed the growth of electric cars and the weakening of the Chinese economy as contributing to the slowdown in oil demand. Quote, the clean energy transition is moving fast and faster than many people realize. Yep, but he did warn that, quote, without moving away from fossil fuels, you will never reach, you will never reach the landmark Paris Agreement's goal of limiting warming to one and a half degrees Celsius from pre-industrial levels. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, d d does anybody not understand that if we just stopped oil today and, and, and we never burned one more drop of oil, gas, or coal, uh, that you can kiss the landmark, the landmark Paris Agreement, uh, one and a half seagull goodbye, that ship sailed, that frog boiled, how many years ago? Anyway, guys, I have to go uh, wrap this up because I have some rat traps to go check while I still can. Bye, guys.
Sancho, what is your analysis? What is your analysis on oil demand growth between now and 2050? I think that's the most intelligent analysis that I've heard of oil demand growth that I have ever encountered since six years before you were born. Thank you, Sancho Panza, for that astute analysis of peak oil, which is the same analysis that 99% of the planet would give you because they've never heard of peak oil. Bye, guys.